Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, please abide in the advice of Plus. I told you the next time you heard from me, it would be when I returned from my friend Josh's wedding in the United States of America, and that is indeed true. 8 LPZ, 8 LE8. I don't mind these stats. I, if you're the kind of person that's gonna look at a run like this, and this is not, I mean, like using a bomb there is very sane. And you're gonna be like, well, it's only 3.1 damage. Who are you, me? Uh, two years ago? That's just, uh, like, let's not be insulting to one another here. Um, excuse me. Sorry, excuse me. How dare you? Move me from room to room. Okay, I've decided I'm not mad, because if I get a key, I can go to the shop and be good to go here. If you'll forgive me, I'm a little bit out of practice, but it's true, I'm back from Pittsburgh, the United States of America. Or as I like to call it, the United States of whatever. Like that song. Um, you might be wondering, NL, are you anecdote rich? I'm anecdote rich, uh, to an extent. Hold on, this is a bomb-worthy situation. Not what I wanted. I know we have another, uh, like, battery out here, but I really want to get that double battery charge. That's gonna really set this whole thing in motion. I am anecdote rich. I got thoughts about flying. I got thoughts about uh, America. I got thoughts about Pittsburgh in general. Uh, 48 hour energy, please. <sighs> you son of a god. Okay, thank god. I just did not want to be teleported away, because if we could just get a battery charge, we're gonna get- we're gonna double our freedom pretty soon. Um, and I'm- I'm gonna tell them for you in this five paragraph essay right now. It was fun. That's what I'm gonna say about that. You know? Uh, everybody there- when we were there, people were very flattering towards us. They were like, oh my god, you made such a long trip. It's been- how- you came all the way from the west coast? Vancouver, BC- and I'm not, like, trying to insult Josh's friends here, but they're like, Vancouver, BC, where is that? And I'm like, it's like three hours north of Seattle. And they're like, oh my god. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, none, none taken. It's the 30th largest city in North America. It's bigger than Pittsburgh. Well, it's roughly the same size as Pittsburgh. Anyway, um, the truth is, it wasn't that long of a trip, you know? We, we took two airplanes. One of the airplanes was like four hours, and one of the airplanes was like, you know, an hour. And people are like, wow, that's an incredible voyage. Nah, dude, I watch, on the way to uh, Pittsburgh, I watched one movie. Now, I could have probably, I, I watched one movie in an HBO 90 minute special, admittedly. But it wasn't like a, a staggering amount of time was invested in getting there in the first place. Like, you're, I, we gotta raise our standards as society, is what I'm trying to say. Because I'm getting too much credit for not really doing anything. On the, on the way back, I watched two movies. And, you know, that's, that's just a normal Saturday afternoon. Now, admittedly, I did have to, you know, I ate a bad sandwich at the airport. Not at the Pittsburgh airport, at the Montreal airport. I gotta give, and you know, if you're a Pittsburghian, if you're a Yinzer, as I've heard they like to be called or refer to themselves as, um, you might be waiting oh, with bated breath right now. How does NL feel about my city? Please to say, I like uh, Pittsburgh from what I've seen of it so far. You know, I uh, there's American cities I really like. That, and not everybody's with me on, on all these, and that's fine, it's, you know, it's a diverse country. I really like the West Coast cities, more or less. Um, well, I'll just take... Well, actually, you know what, we might as well, and, but, you know, like, okay. Here's the thing, we're not gonna get that car battery. I'm, I'm starting to realize, we might as well just book it. Um, I like Seattle, I like, uh, I like Portland, I like San Francisco. I, and there's a couple of cities I don't really like that much. Hey, let me be, let's be positive, you know, I'm trying to be positive. I like New York City, more or less. Um, I know it sounds insulting if you live in New York, but people come to Vancouver all the time, and they're like, I don't really like it. You know, that's fine. It rains. There's not much nightlife. If you don't like the rain, and uh, you love to dance, this might not be the town for you. And that's okay. You know, I'm glad there's cities out there that fulfill your needs, and cities out here that fulfill mine. But, you know, I thought New York was totally fine. Did I think it was the best city on earth? Well, let's not go there. There's a couple American cities I'm not that big of a fan of. And admittedly, it's maybe not necessarily fair, but, you know, like, Boston always gets up there because of... 
Pardon me, just a just a very very gross belch. Um, Boston's always up there because Pax East is always uh, in the winter time, and you know even at the best of times it can be kind of a disaster, and you know it's not really fair. But also I've been there like three times, and the other one is L.A. where I'm just like, man, you need to have a car, and I feel like everybody here that's uh, nice is just trying to be nice because they think I might be a Hollywood producer because of the early onset male pattern baldness. Anyway, Pittsburgh, up near the upper end. I thought, uh, you know, people seemed friendly. Downtown part of the city seemed cool. Good restaurants, we, you know. I, I I got no complaints about Pittsburgh proper. Seemed, seemed cool to me, dude. And there is, I, maybe I'm at risk of overstepping my bounds here a little bit. There's a Pittsburgh restaurant introduction, uh, in, introduction? Restaurant tradition. Institution was what I was gonna say, and I messed it up. Um, it's a chain sandwich restaurant called Pramonti Bros. Pramonti Brothers. And, you know, it's the same, you, you always go in with a little bit of skepticism, you know? People are like, oh, if you're in Montreal, you gotta go to, like, Schwartz's. If you're in New York, you gotta go to, uh, Cat's Delicatessen. Now, I hear both those places are amazing. I've never been, because, I mean, they're crowded. But, um, we did go to a Pramonti Brothers, and I gotta say, as far as regional food standards go, that was a dang good sandwich. And you're like, what could they do to make a sandwich good? I, I, I don't know what to say, except for the fact that it's enormous, which may appeal to you or may not, depending on your predilections in life. Um, dude, we're getting bad rolls on these coupons here. Um, and it also comes with a little bit of coleslaw on top of it. And not like heavily mayonnaise coleslaw, just like, you know, cabbage with a little bit of mayo, because, you know, I'm no big mayo fan. And then the kicker is they put some french fries on it as well. And this is like, you know what? This is a good sandwich. You Pittsburghs, Pittsburghians, you're doing right on the on the Pramonti Brothers Sandwich Corporation. Uh, a food snob who eats, you know, raw fish like two or three times a week, I sign off on your big Pramonti Brothers sandwiches. I will say, this is not, I mean, this is not even a, 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 a joke with America at its expense. It is a joke with like small town America slash North America, because this definitely happens in Canada as well, at its expense. In the town where I was born uh, lived a man who sailed the sea. No, in the town where Josh's wedding was, it was outside of Pittsburgh, um, which is understandable. I don't want it to seem like I'm ragging on my good friend Joshua. It was a great deal with the devil, by the way. Um, because, you know, to get married in a major city center, is expensive and also like it depends here's the thing for as a as a millennial you know as somebody who's like i like uber you know i i have no problems staying in a city center and going to a friend's wedding there but you know if you got like 50 year old relatives they're like where do i park and you're like just park at a parking garage and they're like you know 10 bucks a night this is a ripoff you know it, it, it's always no you're always gonna anger one demographic you know and in this case you know the because it was held in a suburb outside of pittsburgh um my demographic ended up being the one that ended up a little bit i don't want to say upset but like inconvenienced so like where it was it was just off the interstate it's a big highway in case you're not from the united states of america or not familiar with the concept of an interstate and then it was you know typical and this is not an american thing this is a canadian thing as well you know it was a, like a hotel where definitely they have like dentist conventions or something like that. Um, oh, dude, that's pretty good. Oh, dude, that's pretty good. And then you hit him with one of these. I'm gonna get back to the bit. Don't worry, the bit's not gonna be orphaned. Well, dude, just buy it, brother. That's a great one. Absolutely. Dude, I'm happy with this. This is a great setup. Anyway, uh, and then across the street. Target, Dick's Sporting Goods, bunch of chain restaurants, you know, Chipotle, Burger Place, slightly upscale place that's probably slightly upscale because they give you unlimited soup, salad, and breadsticks. You get the general idea. So, like, that's fine. That's where I grew up, essentially. It's like, oh, it's Friday night. Want to go to Boston Pizza? Oh, I don't know. I don't want to dress up, you know? So, like, I'm cool with it, but I tried to get a coffee. And, and this is just small town life. I've been spoiled by what happened, dude. Uh, I've been spoiled by a more urbane existence. Keith Urbane, specifically. 
You know, if I wake up in the neighborhood where I live, I want to get a cup of coffee. I can walk to the Starbucks. I can walk to the other Starbucks. A couple Tim Hortons around, you know? And then there's, like, some local coffee shops. If I really want to, like, hoof it, you know, I could go to some some really... I could even hop on a train and, like, in a couple of minutes get to some of the, the highly most highly regarded coffee shops maybe in the country. And, and I'm, I'm bragging. <laughs> Most of the time I say I'm not bragging, but this time I'm bragging a little bit, but I'm also just putting it into perspective. I woke up, you know, EST to PT jet lag. By the way, if you're going to be like, you're spoiled. Dude, Two. preaching to the converted here. Um, look at me, I'm playing Isaac. This game's been out for like eight years, people are still watching. Of course I'm spoiled. Dude, what is this? Um, spoiled for having the greatest job on the planet. What was I going to say? Um... So yeah, I mean, the, the, let me put it this way, getting coffee in the morning is not a problem. So like, you know, we woke up at this hotel, and I woke up before Kate. It was like, I think it was 12.30, which is late, I want to be clear. But also, that's 9.30 Pacific time, and we'd flown all day. So it's not like we woke up and we slept in like a crazy degree. Yeah, we slept in till noon, but we actually got up like pretty much at the same time we get a PT. Anyway, the point is, um, what are you, my mom? Keys, please? Still pretty good. The point is, um, I go to get a cup of coffee. Sorry, coffee shop in your hotel closes at noon. Of course, why wouldn't it? Everybody knows that demand for coffee peaks in the morning when all the vacationers wake up. Uh, and then at noon, people are like, I don't want any coffee anymore. If you wanted to get a beer, not a problem. you just right next to the front desk. You, you could buy a hundred of them. They wouldn't bat an eyelash. Coffee? Are you crazy, dude? Where are you from? Um, dude, we don't want any of this. Maybe we buy the spirit heart and the key, but like... So I was like, no problem. There's a bigger hotel within walking distance that has a real restaurant inside of it. Surely, the coffee shop in there is open, because it's a Starbucks. I go in there, no Starbucks. Well, I mean, sorry, there is a Starbucks, but also, that Starbucks is closed, because it's 1230. Didn't you get the memo, dude? Nobody here drinks coffee after 1230. All the coffee drinkers wake up at 6 in the friggin' morning. After that, they go to the mall. Get a sparkling water. Um, so I was like, okay, how am I going to get coffee? So I did the very millennial thing, right? Pulled out my phone. I said, uh, Starbucks near me. And then it said, dude, less than half a mile away, there's a Starbucks. Is inside of a Target. So I went, all right, brother, let's do this. I walk outside, walking on the sidewalk to get to the intersection to cross the interstate highway where the Starbucks was. Uh, sidewalk ends. I go, no problem. I grew up in a neighborhood like this. The sidewalk ends, you make your own sidewalk. I'm walking on the grass, get to the intersection, no pedestrian lights. There's a red light and a green light, there's no pedestrian lights. And I go, huh, that's weird. And then uh, I look at a sign right next to me, and it's got a man walking, and then a big red circle with a line through it. You're not supposed to walk, do not cross this intersection. Cross this intersection at your own risk. So I walked back to the hotel, and, you know, the, not ours, but the one with a real restaurant inside of it. And I went, uh, one coffee, please? And they went, sure. And I was the only person inside of the whole friggin' restaurant. I'm not saying that, like, I got over it. It's not that big of a deal. But I'm just used to more domestic amenities around, I suppose. The the saga of me trying to get a coffee in this in, in this suburb, it illuminated to me how much I've been spoiled. But also I was like, man, you guys gotta <laughs> You gotta work on this. I haven't lived in a small town in a while, okay? I'm not saying Pittsburgh's a small town. I'm saying, you know, the town where the the wedding venue was was a small town. We also like when we checked in, the uh the front desk staff was like do you pay now? And I was like, I just kind of raised my eyes a little bit and looked at her. And I was like, I guess. And then she was like, oh, okay. So I'll need a credit card. And I gave it to her. I was like, shouldn't you? But I know, you know, I I grew up in places like this where, you know, deals are signed with a, a wink and a smile. You go to the hotel and everybody says, hey, Daryl. And you're like, how do they know my name? And you're like, well, you can check out any time, but you can never leave, brother. Anyway, it was it, and like the ceremony was good. Uh, Josh's wedding ceremony, I, I mean specifically, was good. Um, the reception was great. Good food, good people. It was a fun time. It was a celebration of Josh and uh, 
his wife's, well, fiance now wife, I guess, uh, love and relationship. They, they both seem extremely happy. It was cool to meet Josh's family in the flesh, and I was like, now this answers a lot of questions about how Josh ended up the way he did. In a positive way. And I know that sounds like a backhanded compliment. I mean it in a positive way. You know, Josh is, uh, he's not afraid to express his emotions. He, he's got a good sense of humor. His parents are like the spitting image. Like his dad was threatening to beat him up and he was threatening to beat up his dad at the, at the reception. But I was like, that's just, that's in character. <laughs> But they're not dysfunctional. They're like they're highly functional and successful for that matter. But anyway, it was cool. I will say, so the wedding uh, ceremony. And I mean this with no disrespect to my good friend Josh. But you know, if you invite the man who stores anecdotes, I'm gonna turn some of these experiences into anecdotes. It was a. Um, I I wouldn't describe it as a religious ceremony. Uh, to the extent, like, it wasn't like a, a three hour long wedding, uh, for sure. But it was, hold on, maybe a battery charge? Don't give him your money, dude. Give him one of these. Oh, baby, Eden's Blessing? That could be fun. Because we got chaos now, things could get real wonky here. Eden's Soul, I should say. Um, but it was more, I mean, you gotta keep it in perspective. The last wedding, uh, I went to was based, I don't, I don't know if I had... I mean, Wolf, you're probably watching the episode. What kind of ceremony was it? It was just like a, it was like a civil ceremony. I don't want to call it like a pagan ceremony because it wasn't. Nobody was running around with like you know, antlers on their head or anything like that. I don't even. Is that offensive? <laughs> I'm just drawing on Game of Thrones, dude. Okay, don't shoot the messenger here. Um, but yeah, it was just like a. It was a. a civil ceremony and then my wedding was basically like by the power vested in me by the you know comp troller of British Columbia I now uh, pronounce you husband and wife uh, in this wedding there was like a it was like a preacher who was like leading things and he was he was really he was leaning a little heavy uh, onto the God stuff and I don't know if Josh is into that maybe yes maybe no it doesn't matter to me he's a friend of mine maybe his wife's into it maybe they're both into it maybe they did it because their families are into it I don't you know it's none of my business, honestly. I was happy to be there because I got to mine some anecdotes. But I've never seen this before. At one point in the ceremony, uh, a, like a guest lecturer came up with the white collar and everything. And he said, uh, so I, if you could all join me in raising your hands to bless this couple. And then, I don't mean this to be rude, okay? But he held up his hand in what I can only describe as a uh, Darth Sidious-like fashion when he casts the Force Lightning at uh, Mace Windu in Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Um, and he held it up to Josh. It is on the fridge. Nailed it. Uh, and then he, he just sort of like held it at Josh's person. If that makes sense at all. Dude, give me... I'll black rune these. Dude, that is huge. Um, it, I, it, I can only describe... And I don't... Again, it sounds rude. And it probably like... You know, if he heard me say it. Not Josh, but the, the pastor. Josh would laugh. But he would probably be like, that's rude. But you know what? I'm a guest in your country. So, what's rude? Me insulting you? Or you having the gall to criticize me in any way, shape, or form? Um, please let me go. And, and then he was like, I encourage you all to do the same. So we're all like in the audience, just holding up our hands vaguely in Josh and his wife's direction. And he's reading some stuff like, you know, Lord, please channel the energies from the congregation into love that this couple can use for one another. And I was like, you can do this? <laughs> and then I felt better about it because the people I was with like afterwards... They were like, you know, it was a great ceremony, don't get me wrong, and it was, it was beautiful. Sincerely. But it, like, they, it could be beautiful, and also a little bit strange, you know, for my cultural standards at least. They were like, what was up with that whole spirit bomb part, though? And I was like, yeah, I don't know. There's also another part where, um, you know, the, the, the officiant, I don't know, is a pastor, preacher, minister. Um, he was, uh, every time, you know, he would talk about love, he'd be like, you know... You guys have so much love for one another. But don't forget, like, while you have love for one another, you also have to have love for God. Because if you don't, uh, 
it'll, nothing will ever work. And I was looking at Kate like, well, you know, Deb 8, but may, I don't know, dude, maybe he's right. As far as I know, no Christian and Catholics have ever been divorced. So, I mean, the jury's still out, right? Um, but at one point he said, never forget, God put a heavy price on your head. And the price was the death of his only son, Jesus. And I went, holy crap, dude, this is sick. I, we're here trying to celebrate the love that these two people have for one another. He's trying to bring it down. Like, hey, don't forget, you know, Jesus died for you. And I'm like, all right, dude. But, like, you know, I'm just here for the champagne. Why are you, why are you being weird like that? But apart from, I mean, it's not even apart from that. It was a beautiful, it was a beautiful ceremony. It was just also vaguely religious, which is a different world for me. So I had to, <laughs> you know, had to reconcile that. It wasn't like I was, um, excuse me, pastor. Why are you filling uh, the heads of the people here with lies today? It wasn't like that. It's not about me. But I was in the audience like, here's the thing, you know. I'd love to tell you I was sitting in the crowd, sitting in the pew, and every moment I was just soaking in the love that these two people had for one another. It was, you know, genuine and pure and beautiful. But there's a lot of, like, the guy repeats himself all the time. I mean, half of the ceremony is repeat after me. So I'm like, dude, I got it the first time. I don't think he's going to screw it up. So you kind of get lost in your own head sometimes, and you're like... I don't know, man. I always... I, I wouldn't say I get weird about religious stuff, like... I'm probably, you know, maybe like the most tolerant person I know. I don't have any keys, dude. I'd love to go to the shop in the item room. There's nothing I could do, dude. Um, but I, I also, I always don't, I, I shouldn't say struggle, I guess, but I, I'm always unaware of uh, what I am supposed to do at a religious ceremony as a non-religious person. Because, like, at one point, he's like, you know, everybody please join me in bowing your heads and praying. And I was like, no. It wasn't like I was like Caesar in, you know, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I wasn't like, no! But I was just like, dude, I don't... Like, this isn't, like, my thing. Is it not more disrespectful for me to, like, pretend to do this? Or is it... I wasn't trying to, like, start a rebellion. I was just like, I don't know if I'm, like... I'm not your dude for this. I wasn't, like, uttering an anti-prayer at exactly the same time. I was just like, I don't know if I'm supposed to... Like, I, I think I told this story on probably too many occasions at this point, but, like, you know, I went to Kate's uh, family's house for, for Korean Thanksgiving. Aka, it's called Chuseok. It's not... I mean, it's Korean Thanksgiving because you eat food and it takes place in the fall. It's not like it's the same sort of celebration, but, you know, the things you do are sort of the same thing. And they were they were singing some hymns, and they were doing it in English because I was there. If I were not there, they would have been singing them in Korean. And then when they started singing, I didn't sing. It's not because I don't, you know, believe in the religion, necessarily. It's just because I don't know the words. I know the first verse of Amazing Grace. And then, like, the chorus of Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. <laughs> but then they they start going into, like, Go tell him up the mountain. I'm like, dude, I don't know. I don't know the words. And then they go, well, just pick up the book and find the, find the hymn. Yeah, but then, like, I also cannot sing is another, you know, real reason that it's up there. So, I didn't, you know, I need to hear the song a hundred times to even have a semblance of how the pitch is supposed to go. No keys again, huh? Still is a great run, don't get me wrong. Anyway, I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. It's more just like, isn't it, you know, wouldn't it be more disrespectful if I if I did participate? Or is it, do I have it totally backwards? I think I might have it totally backwards. But anyway, you know. It's not like they were trying to force their thing onto me and I was like, I refuse. It was more just like, I don't, you know, I don't want to... You know I'm not really, like, adding the... If there's, like, a cumulative prayer energy, I'm not adding anything to it. It's not It's not coming from a pure of heart place. Anyway, it was a great ceremony. <laughs> it, it really was. Like, that's the thing. Like, there would... Yeah, occasionally the pastor would be like, God put a price on your head. And I'd be like, man, dude. It's like Boba Fett. I guess Darth Vader put the price on his head. Boba Fett, Kalei. Anyway, the point is, like, it doesn't all have to be Star Wars references. But uh, so that's, a, that's kind of a strange thing to say. 
Um, but then also, you know, when they were reading their vows and stuff, I was like, this is beautiful, dude. It also, and this is, again, no offense to my good friend Jay Smith OTI. Uh, it also made me realize, and I remarked upon this to Kate as well. I was like, man, we were really smart to not do, like, a traditional wedding. Not to say that what we did was better, but it is definitely better for us. The fact that, like, just being the center of attention to begin with, believe it or not, makes me a little bit uncomfortable sometimes. And then on top of that, to have the center of attention be, like, your love for your spouse, you know, which, you know, people are different. But for me, I'm not going to say it's, like, a private thing, but it's, like, you know... That being the focus of, like, a ceremony for half an hour was pretty cool. That being the focus of a party that's, like, literally all about you for, like, eight hours, I would be dying. No wonder people are stressed out by weddings, like, all the time. I mean, it's not just the incredible cost of it, but also, like, you know. I mean, it's just, you're, like, performing, sort of. I'm not saying you're, like, pretending to be in love. I'm saying, like, you know. You, you got a lot of stuff on the go. You're the subject. You read the vows. People are there for you. And then you go to the reception. And, you know, you just, people make speeches in your honor. And then you have, like, a, a dance with your spouse. And you have a dance. And everybody watches. You have a dance with, like, your your parent. Everybody watches. It's like, you know, and it's all about you, though. Then you got to go around every single table and be like, Hey, hey, Aunt Sally, haven't seen you since I was two and a half years old. Good to see you. Thanks for coming and eating my free food, you know? And also, I love you, or whatever. But I'm just saying that, like, after the ceremony, I was like, man, I'm so glad we didn't do that and also don't have 100 friends. <laughs> because that would be... that's It's pretty much my own nightmare, is, is to be the center of uh, attention to that degree. So, I mean, again, like, you do your thing, I'll do mine. I'm not saying there should never be traditional weddings. I w if anything... To some extent, I was envious of the fact that Josh was kind of like so open and unembarrassed about it. It seemed like he was having a great time. The reality of the situation is if I was in his shoes, I would be like, I'm going to bed at 8.30. Have fun, everybody. Like, send me the check for the open bar in the morning. I would be a little uncomfortable. And case the same. It's not like I'm depriving her of the, like, dream experience that she wants. She was saying the same thing to me. She was like, man, I'm glad we didn't have to do that. It's like, yeah, I feel you. And if you think I'm the extreme, we went, uh, is like a lifelong friend of mine since we were, like, adolescents. One of the guys we went with. Um, oh, God, I forgot about Tarot Cloth. Um, he got married when he lived across the country uh, from his parents. And uh, he didn't even tell his mom. He, like, eloped. You know, we'd have to be pretty silly not to take that. He eloped. Um, and then, like, the weekend after, called his mom. And was like, hey, mom, just so you know, like, I got married. And, like, when I come back, we'll have, like, a nice... Not ceremony, but we'll have, like, a little party sort of thing to, to celebrate. But, like, yeah, I'm, like, married. Like, I didn't invite you to my wedding. <laughs> So if you think I'm the extreme, I'm tell I'm a I'm a harbinger of millennials to come, dude. Now to be fair, he had other, you know, I I'm blessed to have a very stable family un unit, and uh, I mean his his concern, as I understand it, was more like he was worried his mom would like she would be dramatic and maybe ruin things or or make things more stressful than they had any right to be. And dude, here's the thing: it's his wedding, like. But my mom would never, uh, I mean, she would forgive me, but, like, she would carry that pain with her for her whole life. But also, my mom is not the kind of person that I would ever exclude from my wedding, because she's, like, normal. And very supportive. So I got nothing to, you know, it's kind of a chicken and the egg situation, right? I would be firing the first shot, there's no question about that. Anyway, it was a good time. The other anecdote, it's weird, okay? Because, like, I, I saw friends, uh, many of whom, you know, I, most of whom I have not seen within the last couple of years. So did we, did we cut loose a, bit, a little bit? Do we have stories? Yeah, we got stories. But, like, the stories, I feel like those are better shared in a group context. Because I don't want to, like, 
Man, you'll never believe what, like, this person got up to. They went so crazy. It's not my story to tell, especially if they also exist in a public space. Nobody did anything that was like, I took a, took a dump on a cop or something like that. But, you know, it's the same way. Like, you know, you're kind of off the... You're off duty when you're at an event like this. So I don't want to, like... Don't take this the wrong way, but I'm not gonna, like, come back and if Mouth had any, like, super, you know, shameful stories, I'll be like, you never believe what Mouth got into. Here's the thing, that's that's for me and Mouth to laugh about, you know? That's not for you. You don't know him. I've had to, you know, know this guy for, like, 20 years at this point. Why should you be privy to our unique stories and inside jokes that we have with one another? Pretty presumptuous of you to be honest but like you know who knows in a group context they may come out a little big you never know have we had broken modem it seems like an item that even for free i was like i'm not gonna pick it up so then i realized i have to pick it up because otherwise how are we gonna make sure we got all this stuff taken care of so this run turned out just fine um it was never bad really it it didn't get like crazy strong Dude, you know what I want to see in a movie trailer? I know we're getting into it's micro bits now, but what I want to see in a movie trailer is a minor key pitch down version of Crazy Town's Butterfly, uh, and it's a movie about like you know like a dangerous uh, what's the fatal attraction? You know like swim fan. You know Erica Christensen is, is stalking whoever the male lead in that movie is, and you, she's a butterfly, sugar baby. Come, my lady, you make my legs shake, you make me go, and then uh, like a somebody whispers. Crazy. And then, you know, that's the end of the trailer, and it says the name of the movie. Beloved, or something like that. I'm telling you, dude, the time is right for Crazy Town's Butterfly to make its cultural resurgence. It had, like, maybe five or six years ago, it, it, they'd started, but they never finished, dude. Same with Eiffel 65's Blue. It appeared in Iron Man 3, and then sort of has started to fade out of the cultural relevancy again. Everything old gets new again, dude. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe it's that that was around the age that, you know, people who were born in the same era as me started to actually purchase their own things, and as a result, they mined it for nostalgia. Uh, and now, the generation that is reaching that age is, you know, they were born in, like, 1997 or something like that, so there's different... You know, they're, they're like nostalgic for songs that I already thought were bad because I had an adult brain when they came out, like Party in the USA by Miley Cyrus. NL, how dare... NL, you can't... Dude, I can say it. I was there, brother. I lived through it. I know you heard it on the school bus in fourth grade a hundred times. That don't make it a good song, okay? That's not to say that I didn't like a bunch of garbage songs when I was in fourth grade. I mean, that would just, that would, that's rewriting history. I mean, Garth Brooks was my favorite artist until I was like, uh, maybe 12 years old. Now, for many people, he's their favorite artist to this day. But like, you know, come on. <laughs> How can you like Garth Brooks that much when Chris Gaines is around? Plus, we all know the real musical talent in that family is Billy Ray Cyrus, um, and his new song with Lil Nas X. Is that... Look, I just go on the tweets, alright? I ain't ever heard it. It's hard to figure out where the irony ends and the real genuine appreciation begins. Anyway, by the way, did I watch some movies on the flight? You know I watched some movies on the flight. I watched Widows. Of the three movies I watched, I do have to say Widows was probably my favorite. Give it an 8 out of 10. It's a movie about a heist gone wrong, and then uh, there's political intrigue. It's a little bit like a worse version of The Departed, with the way the stories intertwine. But it's still good, I give it an 8 out of 10. I watched Yorgos Lanthimos' film The Favorite. I enjoyed it a great deal, I'd give it an 8. A little less twisted than uh, his previous work, which I think actually contributed to me enjoying it a little bit less, but still a very mature 
an enjoyable film with a lot of darkly comedic stuff. Give it an 8. I watched Overlord. I expected Overlord to be... Uh, I mean, I had fairly high hopes going in. I was let down by probably like the first two-thirds of the movie. It started to slap a little bit towards the end. I'm going to give it a 6. I would say, even though it did not meet the expectations I had for it, I gotta give that a fresh on the Rotten Tomatoes freshness scale. I had a decent time watching the movie. Uh, I enjoyed myself. I also watched the 2018 Flight of the Concords HBO special live in London. And uh, all I gotta say about that is thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. I'm so great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya!